it starts rather inauspiciously with a professor from MIT who, as he listened to his wife's cell phone wake him up at night as it ran out of battery power, started wondering, with all the electricity running around in the walls, why couldn't some of that just go into the phone? And from that spawned an idea, a company, a technology that fundamentally could change the way we do everything. The ability to transfer energy or electricity without wire safely and efficiently and over a significant distance are things that just fundamentally had not been done. And if I were to take another object, so in this case, another coil or resonator that operates at exactly the same frequency, what you'll see is that when I place it here, that it actually generates sufficient energy that it creates a magnetic field which is picked up by this one. One of the things about this technology is you can see that it's distance based. So the further away I take it from the source, eventually the lights start to dim and it drops off. But another unique aspect of the technology is that you can take passive objects. So here's a resonator that I can place in the way and you'll now see that you can go much, much further because the energy hops through this repeater into this other object allowing you to exchange energy over that very long distance. If you don't have to plug your electric car in, meaning you can drive it into the garage and get out of your car and walk away, it becomes very similar to the way you'd run a regular gasoline car. You don't have to worry about plugging it in, unplugging it, weather, all those sorts of things could increase the adoption of electric vehicles. What if you could place implanted medical devices in your body that get their power from outside? If you could do that, it would remove the infection risk that often proves fatal to people with implanted devices. And finally, for sort of very, very high volume, if you think about uh, batteries, and here's something that's about the size of a AA battery. A AA battery, people don't think of this as being that evil or bad for you. But the fact is, this is one of the most expensive forms of power ever invented. It costs on the order of $300 a kilowatt hour to supply energy from this. And people won't use rechargeable batteries to replace these because they have to take the object, they have to take the battery out of the device. And Imagine if you could use wireless power to create a wireless battery. And here's the first wirelessly rechargeable battery. It's only a prototype at this point. It's a distance away from being on the market. You can see a little light as it charges up. And that means you don't have to take this out and put it in a charger. But more importantly, let's say they're in the flashlight, just as an example. See how it charges? while it's in the device. So imagine that you could actually all of your appliances that run on disposable batteries, you could put a wirelessly rechargeable battery into the device. You'd never have to use a disposable battery again. And that fundamentally would change our world in a big way from an environmental standpoint, from a cost standpoint, an energy efficient standpoint, and it makes your life better. It may be one of the first green applications that actually could save money. The world starts with a lot of people that say, no, you can't do something, or naysayers. And if you think of naysaying or objections to things that could be done, if you can get through enough of those objections, you get to something that's innovative. And thinking about the technology business, particularly brand new technology, uh, similar to in the case of wireless power, for example, the first premise that usually starts with when you have something that's completely brand new and no one's ever thought of it before, oftentimes the first thought, the first naysayer will say that's impossible. And when you demonstrate to someone that something's possible, when they've said that it's impossible, your job is not done yet.
because there's another naysaying that occurs right after that or another objection. So the minute you show someone something that was supposedly impossible and you show them that it's possible, oftentimes the next objection you'll get is, oh, anyone can do that. And maybe not anyone can do that, but that's the second level of naysaying. So that's impossible. You show them that it's possible. Anyone can do that. If you show them that it's not possible just to easily do it or just not that anyone can do it, the, usually the third naysaying in terms of real innovation is, oh, no one will buy that. So I've often been convinced that if you can get through those three naysayers, that's impossible, anyone can do it, no one will buy it, and you get to that end where you've answered all three of those questions, you have something that is truly innovative.